Hi, we're Steve and Betsy Stockman, and uh, we began Biblical Soul Care um, in September of 2012. After um, I had come to Betsy and shared a lot of concerns, a lot of fears, uh, we were dealing with some financial problems, uh, the budget wasn't working, and um, I just came and opened up to her and, and let her know that there were some things I needed to be honest. And at that point, um, her response, well, I'll let you share, what was your response? Um, that we needed to get some help. We needed an outside source that um, I had some trust issues and um, it led into depression. And I felt like I couldn't talk to you anymore. And I knew that that wasn't helping and that we needed to seek help. I felt uh, ashamed, um, fearful, that uh, we would have to come to this measure after growing up in a Christian home, growing up in a at Calvary, going to Christian schools, going to Christian colleges, and coming to the point where we needed some help. That was humbling. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I was very, I felt humiliated. Um, I felt very inadequate. I felt inadequate as, as a wife, as, as a mother, um, as a teacher for my kids, uh, pretty much in every way. And I know that um, I couldn't deal with my own feelings of, of uh, inadequacy and uh, distrust. And I couldn't, and because I was crippled, I knew I couldn't help Steve. And, and what he was feeling either. Um, I was very focused on my on all my flaws. I had lost hope that our marriage could be what it, what it used to be. The enemy really had me where uh, I was I was withdrawing. Uh, I was focused on details. I was very focused on um, every little failure and I would feel very overwhelmed. Yeah, I know I felt um that hopelessness and lost feeling as a husband, as a father, as a leader, um, that perception that you have to have it all together, you have to be doing things perfectly, um, almost that imposter type uh, attitude of I can't really reveal what's really going on. I didn't want to lose my job, I didn't want to lose my wife, I didn't want to lose my children, I didn't want to give them an example of failure because um, the enemy had had been ruling and running and had access into our, into our lives. And um, I saw that freight train coming. It was a long way off, it could have been months, it could have been years, but I knew there was a freight train coming that if we didn't deal with these issues, if we didn't come and get help and be vulnerable and expose some of our uh, some of the lies that it was gonna smack us right in the face and we would be in a lot more trouble a lot more um, problems would come from it and so whatever it would take to get off that track to get away from that freight train coming was what I was what is what I was willing to do, and that's another reason why you know that hopelessness and that loss, um, I didn't want it to define us and to handcuff us and defeat us. Defeat us exactly. So as we started uh, meeting and talking through certainly the finances, because I thought that was you know the core of of the issues. If we had that in line, and we would be able to balance our budget and find all this extra money that all the problems would, would go away and things would start to fall into place. But that wasn't even 10% of the whole process. It was our hearts. It was those idols. And we talked a lot about, if you remember, you know, what idols mm -hmm. are, are in our lives. And I was angry and I was dejected, if you remember. It was emotional, physically, you know, blood pressure problems and work wasn't even uh, going all that well. And through the process of, of meeting uh, every couple weeks and a lot of the reading, uh, and if you remember, 
that was a lot of what we had to do. We had to change our thinking. And I don't know if... Yes, my thinking um, definitely was changed. And I can definitely say that that's a work of the Lord because I'm very set in my ways. Uh, I like routine and I like things to stay the same. And I don't like surprises. I had unknowingly set you up as as an idol and it took this situation for the Lord to show me that. I was looking for Steve to fulfill me uh, in ways that the Lord wanted to be and I didn't know that I was doing it and it took something big like this to get me to see that. And over time, he gently showed that to me. Um, I remember coming in here and just being floored when, when Steve uh, brought out the pages about the idols. And I thought, I don't have any idols. What, what are these idols? And then over the next few weeks, the Lord showed these to me uh, through, living in his, through learning to live more in his presence and be conscious of him. He showed me these things. Yeah, and if you remember, a lot of our idols were good. They were good things. Good things. Homeschooling, active in the church, serving, even adoption, bringing an orphan mm -hmm. over. But you can make idols, make good things into idols that prevent God from working and changing our hearts. The Lord seemed to work on both of us differently, even though we went to the same meetings. And... He worked very gently with me and let me know that I was in good company um, being depressed and that, that that was just a symptom and that I just needed to concentrate on him and practice living in his presence. The other thing was that because of my trust issues, I didn't trust that God really liked me. I knew he loved me, but I didn't know if he liked me. And he brought several verses that just brought comfort. And whenever I'm feeling like I, you know, like maybe I don't really matter to God, that, um, that he pulls out and, and speaks to me. And one is Zephaniah 3.17. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. We're not doing this alone. We're not by ourselves. There are other people that we can come along with and we can encourage and that can encourage us. Mm -hmm. And we have to be humble. We have to be vulnerable. We have to be um, uncomfortable. We uncomfortable. Yeah. To, to remove that costume that we put on, then not be an imposter. I think, um, you know, part of what I've learned through God's grace in this process is that valleys, that a stub toe, where we stumble, that doesn't catch God by surprise. Sometimes he puts the limbs out in front of us so that on our way down we, we grab and we reach on to his hand and we hold on tightly and he pulls us right back out of that miry clay. He is there to support us. He never leaves us. And I don't know that we would always receive the same blessing and the same enjoyment in God if we didn't trip, if we didn't fall. I think another big thing that I learned is that um, dreams are good, but they and become idols and our dreams are safe with God it's okay to die to a dream it's okay to open up your hand and and let God have it and see what he does with it um, and that I'm learning that everything that I that I have now is safe in his hands um, Israel felt the same way and Micah 7, 7, and 8 says, But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light.